designed to blow whenever there's a power overload. Side, this top seller, it has no this stops the flow of electricity and prevents a wiring fire. We may never see fuses in action, but they're constantly working to protect us wherever electrical current flows. Choosing the right fuse depends on the amount of current. To make a high voltage fuse for use in electrical substations, this machine cuts notches into a long silver strip which will serve as the fuse's element. The notches will help control the way the fuse blows. Bits of soft metal are melted onto the strip. These will be the points where the fuse blows. One end of the silver element is welded to the top of a ceramic core. And the element is wound around it. slide the element core into the fuse casing and bend back metal tabs. Then, using a soldering technique called brazing, they seal everything together. They take a brass washer and wind ignition wire around it. They're assembling the striker pin, the device that indicates a blown fuse and shuts down the power. The striker pin is fitted to the washer, and with the wire protruding, it's placed into a holding device. Explosive powder is added to each striker pin. Then the bottom of the pin is plugged with a rubber stopper. The striker pin is pressed into a brass capsule. This will contain the mini explosion that pushes out the pin when the fuse is blown. This test run shows how it all happens. The pin's ignition wire is wrapped around an electrical post. Workers clamp down the pin and position the pendulum that swings to indicate the amount of force with which the pin fires. A jolt of power detonates the explosive. This causes the pin to protrude, signifying a blown fuse. Now, a metal eyelet slides onto the striker pin's ignition wire, and then a wire coil is attached to it, completing the striker pin's ignition system. A snare pulls the whole assembly into the fuse. The end of the coil is tied to the fuse's cap. And an outer cap is press fitted over the inner one. Next, the fuse is filled with sand. This sand will absorb energy from the element when the fuse blows. tap the fuses to compact the sand inside. Next, an outer cap is lubricated. And it's pressed onto the other end of the fuse. This machine spins grooves onto the cap, pinching it tightly to the fuse casing. is run through each one of these fuses checking the voltage to confirm that they're in good working order. Sealant is then pumped around the cap's rims to make them completely airtight. Finally, the safety information is affixed to the fuse. And some electrical specifications are stamped onto the caps. Now, these fuses are ready to go with the electrical flow and blow at the first sign of trouble. If you have any comments